Well, good evening, people, and welcome to another edition of Pensacola Wants to Know, folks. I got a great show lined up for you tonight, and I got a gentleman I've been knowing for years, uh, a super motivator, a guy that you ought to know. Just written a brand new book called Soars, and, uh, and we're going to talk about it. But let me introduce you to this young man. It's this Darius Swinton. Hey, Darius, how you doing? Man, Vernon, I am doing great on this day. How are you, sir? I am doing well. Thank you for agreeing to come on to the show, Darius. Um, I'm, I'm glad to know that uh, you are writing, you have written a, a, a motivational book. You've always been a motivator, but you've written a motivational book. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, first of all, Vernon, let me just acknowledge your many years of being on this radio show and how you've carried the torch for so many years and all your great many successes and stories. So for me, it is truly an honor just to have the opportunity to come on your show and be able to talk a little bit about my book. The title of the book is Soar Beyond Your Limitations. Through my international travels and doing work in many different venues, I just was led to write this book that I know, I know without a doubt, will be of great benefit to those who will, will read this book. Soar, what does it stand for? Stretch out and rise. And what I've learned, Vernon, throughout my travels, that most people who are in their right mind want to be successful during this one lifetime. And therefore, I've created some great information to help those who are committed to living a better life and a better lifestyle to be successful. That's sore. means to stretch out and rise. Very good. Very good. Now, the book is already published and available for purchase. Am I right? Yes, it is. Believe it or not, it was self-published. I took the okay. time out to publish that book myself with some consultants, and it's online at the thesoregroup.com. The Soar okay. Group. Reasonable cost, man. Just nineteen ninety nine. Really? Includes shipping and handling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nineteen ninety nine. Okay, very, that's and, it. And, this very, very economical. I, I, no, I have to apologize to you. I hadn't had an opportunity to, to read the book yet. Okay, and uh, but I'm, uh, I understand it's very easy reading and real quick reading and very motivating. What, but let me ask you this question. Speaking of m motivation, you talked to us. What motivated you to write this book? Well, you know what really motivated me was traveling throughout this country and this world. Mm -hmm. seeing the number of people and crossing the paths of many people and training many people who had a sincere desire to want a, be a better lifestyle. But not all of them had the tools, the information, and the resources to go beyond just the desire and the motivation. So therefore, I created the book to say, okay, here's some tools, here's some strategies that you can easily implement to make your life better. Not only make your life, but make your lifestyle better. And it, and it works very, it is very simple. People will read the book and say, man, this is too simple. I'm saying, but the key to it is to put it into motion and become action oriented. That's the key. <laughs> well, very good. Very good. I know you've been doing a lot of training across the country and you have a lot of opportunity to motivate people on different subjects and in and, and, and their, and their life, in their lifestyle. I know some people Darius, I know that they sometimes just don't feel like they can just pull themselves up by the bootstring and and, and, and and lead a successful life. I think your book gonna get into stuff like you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah, I know your mom I, I I saw this great quote in your book and I'm, I'm gonna put it on the screen if I can find it here. It says, which I love, when giving up is not an option. Wow. Let's talk about that. Powerful, man. When giving up is not an option, what do we do as human beings when you don't have that as an option? We don't give up. Right. And the key, the key to a good, healthy, and safe, and successful lifestyle is to eliminate giving up as an option. And when you eliminate giving up as an option, you have only one direction to go in, my friend, and that is for it. That is being productive. That is being proactive. That is being successful. But you got you to eliminate giving up as an option. It's too One of the easiest things to do in life is to what? Give up. Give up. You don't have to do anything <laughs> to give up. You just do nothing and you what? Have given up. I'm, I'm stressing the importance that while we have been given this one path to travel called life, why give up on it? Why give up on yourself? 
And you shouldn't. It just doesn't it, make sense to me. It, it doesn't. Sense. It really doesn't make sense. But sometimes some people do that. But, you know, uh, but they don't have to. They don't have to at all. Okay? And so those are the kind of things that inspired you to put pen to paper, huh? Yes, sir. No question about it. Because I was traveling, like, from... Uh, from Atlanta to South Africa, or wherever, from New York to South Africa, China. Man, I had paper and pencil just writing stuff down, and it all came together. The titles of the eight chapters all fell into place, and all the information, Vernon, is factual and truthful. Right. Okay. It, it is. It's all facts, and, and it's applicable to the average human being who have a desire and an interest in, in improving their lifestyle. That, no, there's a difference between life and lifestyle. Life right. is just to exist. Life is just like, yeah, you just exist. A lifestyle is like the wind. It's air in motion, which means you got to do something. And when you, whenever we have see air in motion, you see stuff moving around, man. You see leaves <laughs> and flowers and stuff be moving. So we got to create a lifestyle whereby we're not going to give up. That's true. That is true. And, and a lot of people like to give up, but we can, like you said, it's not an option. No point in giving up. Just, just do what you love, and 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 I will tell you what, you got you. Before we go any further, let's tell folks first of all how they can get a hold of this book. How can they purchase it if they will? Okay. Very easy. First of all, the website, the soar group at the soar group dot com. That's very mm -hmm. easy. Three words connected. The soar group dot com. Or you can call and talk to me personally. Forget about all the answer service and all these other people you have to go through. Just call me at 804-674-9550. That's very easy. 804-674-9550. All right. I'm going to put that I'm gonna put that number back up there where they can read it and get the website uh, as, as well. Uh, there is. Now, let's talk about The book is not uh, a very long book. You only have about eight chapters in that book, right? Eight pack chapters, man. And, and the thing about the book, almost in every chapter, you have worksheets. You have uh -huh. little things that you can do to make sure that you're moving forward. Like in chapter one, we was talking about creating a mission statement. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a little exercise where you can create your own mission statement. And therefore, in each chapter, you got something you can do, become more applicable, to hold you responsible for what you want to experience in life. Right. Wow. Great chapters. Great chapter. And that, and that is, in other words, in other words, you, 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 you try to determine, and I think most people should try to understand where they're going in life. What's your mission in life? What, 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 you've been, what you're trying to accomplish in life? So put that to paper. You know, that, in fact, that ought to be the top priority in your life is to help, what you say, help stretch out and rise. Yeah, it's, man, and yeah. rise, man. That's yeah. what it's all about. See, and, and what happens, a lot of people, they purchase the book uh -huh. and they get stuck after chapter two because chapter one is about what is your mission. And when mm -hmm. they start reading, they see they got to do an exercise. They say, oh, that's too much work. That's it, but how can you implement a mission unless you create a mission? Right, that's you gotta true. You got to create that mission. So that's you true. Got, so you got the first chapter is what is my mission? You got to create the mission. Chapter two is now I got to transition my mission into reality. So you got to take it out of your head, Vernon, and put it into action. <laughs> you know, you know, old school say, you probably get familiar with this term, old school say, if you talk the talk, you got to what? Walk the walk. walk. Otherwise, you just, you all, otherwise, you're talking and going around in circles. I'm saying, no, no, no. If you're serious about your life, you're serious about your growth <laughs> and development, you're serious about being successful, you got to walk it. How you walk it, you got to prepare and plan yourself for the experience. That is so true. And I tell people that all the time, Darius. I tell them that all of the time. I, I know a lot of people, they got great ideas. They got it in the head. But for yep. some reason, they're afraid to make that very next step. And and it may be by reading your book. Maybe because they, they're on a mission. They're on a mission. They, 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 don't get me wrong. But they can't transform that mission into reality. And so your book, is designed to help those folks to transform the, that that idea in your head or those concepts in your head, transfer it into reality. Okay, and do it for you know you know why I think a lot of folks 
be, be, uh, afraid to do it is the fear of failure. Okay, one of the things I, I think, and I know you know this as well, all of the great inventors. I'm talking about uh, the man who invented electricity, and anybody who invented anything didn't do it on the first try. Okay, how many times they fail? How many times Abraham Lincoln failed to become president before he, he was he finally elected president? How many times it, it does? Uh, I read the story one time about Thomas Edison and how many times he failed. It was Edison that invented the light bulb that mm -hmm. uh, he failed to do that? But he was determined. Right, and your determination must overcome your fear of failure. Because the only way you can have failure, you got to make it a reality, which means you do nothing, or you yeah. stop trying, or you give up, or you worry. And so I strongly encourage people. I say there's three things. If you want to be successful, you must manage well. And the great creator made sure that two things were always operative until we die. So the first thing that you must make operative in your life, if you want to be successful, is that you got to have the right attitude. Right. Every okay. person is born with an attitude. Every person is born with the ability to what? To think. Every human being is born with thoughts, certain thoughts. Right, right. The second thing that every human being is born with is emotion. So what do you have to manage? You got to manage your attitude, your thoughts. You have to manage your what? Emotions. Emotions, right. Now, 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 Vernon, it, it, it sounds simple, and it is because the great creator gave us what? Thoughts and emotions. <laughs> 24-7, you got thoughts and emotions operating. But the challenge for so many people to be successful is that third piece. That's your behavior. That's the option you have. See, having thoughts and emotions, that's consistent with every human being. Right. And how you utilize your behavior is a challenge. What makes the difference between those who win and those who lose? How they manage their attitude, emotions, and behavior. It's that, it's that action, man. So instead of procrastinating and waiting and worrying, use your behavior based on the management of your attitude, the management of your emotions to make it happen. Mm -hmm. To trans trans transition that, that mental part or that mission into reality. Okay. That's the key. Now, you, you, you said it right. Attitude, emotion, that was the third thing you said. What was that? Third was behavior. Behavior. Action. Yeah. Right, actions yes, or yes, action. You know what they said about it? said actions speak louder than words. So you have to do That's something. What they say. You got to do something. You got to, you you got to do got something to, about you it. You got to move. You got to move on it because the three things also that I strongly emphasize to people. They say like, "There is when you come all this stuff." I say through my experiences, <laughs> through my learning, through my travel. So there's some things that we must manage. That's Two things, Vernon, are always available to every human mm -hmm. being, no matter you are born in the world, no matter, no matter where you live in the world. Okay. The first thing that's equal is time. Time is the same no matter where you live in this world. A second equals the same amount of time. East Coast, West Coast, no matter where you are in the world, a second equals a second equals a second. A minute equals 60 seconds, no matter where you live in the world. And guess what? If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. You can never repeat that time. The other thing is space. You have to find a way to manage your space. Every human being will always physically occupy an amount of space. Who's responsible for your adult space? You are. You are. I am. Now, there's an option here. Either you can manage your space or you give somebody else to manage your space. And if you give somebody else to manage your space, don't complain, don't criticize, don't get mad because you gave them permission to manage you and your space. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it sounds simple, but I'm telling people do it all the time. They let other people manage them and manage their attitude and emotions. Then they get all upset and angry at the person. Say, why mm -hmm. should you? You gave them the authority to manage you. The other thing that we have to manage are opportunities. You have to manage. Each time you get an opportunity, you got to seize that opportunity and make sure that you take a full advantage of it that'll help you become more successful or safe or healthy or creative or productive. Opportunities are far and few. You can't let them pass you by. And the fourth thing that we all got to manage, Vernon, are resources. Yeah. As we become more international and more diverse, 
Oh man, you got the internet, you got Google, you got all this stuff working for you. So many resources are readily available to us. But we gotta find a way to utilize them and manage them constructively for our welfare. Just some things to consider that, that I talk about more in depth in my book. Right, okay. Now you're absolutely right now uh, about that. I, I'm, I'm telling you, um, I, it's amazing what you're saying I lived, and, and I guess folks like you and me, uh, we, we know that. We know that. And and sometimes it's hard to convey that to other folks, just how important it is. Time. Time is one of the most precious resources you have to your dis exposure, okay? You got you, just, you said time, space, and yes. opportunity. Opportunities and resources. But you got to take advantage of them. one of the things I think when you talk about in your in in the third chapter of your book, so you got to do those things. You got to make those changes either for better or for worse. Talk about that. Yeah. Tell them why. Yeah. Why is it necessary for better or for worse? Because we're never going to be the same. Time moves on. So what are you going to do with your time? What do you want to do with your lifestyle? Do you want to continue to be the same, but you can never ever remain the same throughout your entire lifetime? So you got to decide. Do I want to live a lifestyle where I'm, I'm working for the better, living for the better? Or do I want to create a lifestyle where it's for the worse? That what I say and what I do is always damaging to my health. It's damaging to my emotions. It's damaging to my thoughts. You always got to be of what you put in your body. I'm mean, putting stuff in my body that's going to hurt me, bring harm to me, or keep me healthy. And so <laughs> you got to find a way to say, hey, I'm going to let it live for change for the better or change for the worse. But guess what is the denominator will tell us? Time. Time is the equalizer and then as, as your life progresses you reflect back and say, I should have done this and I should have done that and look where I'm now and say, no, 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 no. Seize the moment when right now to be the best human being you can be when not not tomorrow but when right now. You don't wait until two years and that's it. Well, two years down the road I'll be a better person. No, 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 no. Seize the moment right now. Have a better attitude about yourself. Have better emotions about yourself. And as you see, Vernon, I'm not talking about anyone else. You got to focus on who? Like Michael Jackson said, the man or the woman in the mirror. <laughs> That's what you have to deal with right there. Exactly. Exactly That's right. What about. That's what it's about. And I think that folks that, um, I think a, a, a lot of folks hear you. And they want to do this, but sometimes they, they just need that little encouragement, that little what I call that little push or that little shell to get to get in there. And I encourage folks if they read this book, if they read this book to buy it, if they read it, then they will take that very next step. They will go in to the very next concept in, in, in your book. And they're either gonna change themselves for the better or for worse, or they gotta become better than what they used to be. And I know yeah. everybody wants to become better than what they used to be, right? Yes, yes. And don't, so you don't become better than you used to be accidentally. You want to be intentional. Yeah. And what I do is intentional. <laughs> My attitude changed intentionally. I'm a better person intentionally. It didn't happen accidentally. I had control over my thoughts. I had control over my emotions. I had control over my behavior. And that's what you want. That is a great lifestyle, Vernon. When you can intentionally batter yourself, your attitude, your emotions, your behavior. Those are three things that are always operative. <laughs> and I don't care where I go in the world. I focus on those three things. Because I said, hey, how are you managing your attitude? How are you manage your emotions? How are you managing your behavior? Because that's your lifestyle right there. All of those three things. That's your lifestyle. And believe it or not, at the end of the journey, when someone give a eulogy on somebody, guess what they're talking about? <laughs> their attitude, their emotions, and their behavior. That was their lifestyle. True. That is so true. That is so, so true. <laughs> and and, and uh, if folks don't believe, you know, there's a direct line there, and I know you know this, between attitude and behavior. There's a direct connection, okay? Because your attitude that's where it starts at in order to change your behavior. I, I know people in their lives, I, I want to do better in life or I want to do more in life. But that step 
of a thousand miles start with that, that, that journey of a thousand miles start with that very first step and a lot of folks are real reluctant to take that step they want to they, they, they sometimes they're, they're so comfortable in their lifestyle or in their attitude or, or even sometimes in, in, in emotion but if they if they were to if they were to think about changing the attitude you know and what we're saying now is changing for the better you know not not for the worse change if you change it for the better and your attitude can change i i, I went through a course one time that and, and folks say well i don't believe attitude can change my behavior well, yeah it can change your behavior okay you, you, if you like something if you didn't like something and and, and if you came across something that that make you 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 change your mind about it the, the the very attitude about it in other words i tell folks all the time i can i can come in very i can come into the room when i was teaching i said i can come in this room very happy you can sit back in the room and you can throw an eraser at me and you can change my whole attitude the other people can change how you feel and when you change how you when you hit me with that eraser well my my attitude is going to be a little different then then it going to affect how my behavior, how I control my behavior. I might, I might strike back at you, or I might not. But, but chances are, I might strike back at you. You can change my, whole, or I might go home and kick the dog. I might go home and ignore my my wife or something like that. But those attitudes has a direct uh, impact on one's behavior. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Vernon, it's very important for for our our listeners and our viewers to realize. And in order for the body, for us to physically move, Vernon, we need a stimulus. Yeah. And the stimulus can <laughs> come about by way of your attitude to stimulate your physical being or your emotions to stimulate your physical being. Or you give something external to stimulate you. But you cannot move without a stimulus. You have to decide what is the stimulus that's causing me to do what I do, either for the better or for the worse. You manage that stimulus, you manage your behavior. So right. you got to understand how that works. So a good example is last week I did a virtual training for the federal government and this one guy who's a supervisor says that he oftentimes used profane language to get his employees' attention. So you know, it's the supervisor, we had this conversation and we talked about the benefit of it, you know, and the rewards of using profane language and would he be receptive to his employees using profane language towards him? And he said no. And a great <laughs> conversation with that. <laughs> what is civil, what is not civil. Next day he came back, he said at the beginning of the class, he says, there is there's something I want to share with the class. I want to apologize. Because here I was being a supervisor, thinking that profane language was the right way to talk to adults, he said. I learned that it's not appropriate nor acceptable to use that language. And I said, what happened all of a sudden? He said, man, <laughs> I just had to change my attitude and way of looking at things. I said, good for you, brother. I said, good for you. <laughs> it works, man. It, it absolutely, it yourself. It absolutely works if people would give it an opportunity to work. And I want folks to get to get this book, uh, Mary. They need to read your book, and and it will tell them. It will give them. A, it's a, it's a road map. It's a, it's a road map on how to do these things if you're afraid to yes. to, to to do that. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Here's a number. Is that number? Is that the correct number? Uh, we need to change the two to a six, and we are good to go. Okay, the two. Eight zero four six seven. Change the two to a six. Eight zero four six seven four. Okay, six seven four. Eight zero yes, four. Sir. Let me change it right now. I'm gonna keep talking yeah, in. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, Vernon. I'm, I'm uh, and I got some stories in my book also. Um, and one of the stories is about uh, basically my grandmother, who at the age of ninety five wanted to raise some chickens. Now, some of y'all might be familiar with these things called chicks, you know, uh, baby chickens called chicks. And so she wanted to use her social security money, money to raise some chickens. Uh -huh. Her daughter told her, no, 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 you too old. You shouldn't be doing this. You too old. You you shouldn't use your money to, to buy some little bitties, buy some bitties and raise chickens. Uh -huh. She decided that what she wanted to do, she took her social security check 200, I think it's like $1,500, $600, went 10 miles down the road to, to Mullen, South Carolina, bought some some biddies, brought them back, had a neighbor to bring them back in the back of their truck. She had a neighbor to build a chicken uh, pen and everything. And guess what? 
she raised chickens and hens, and every morning, Verna, she would go out in that chicken head, and she would get the eggs, and she gave yeah. the eggs away free. 95 years old, you think she gave up on life? You think she gave up on what she could achieve in life? No, 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 not, she did not, Verna. And that's, you know, that's like a testimony to let us know. Age is not a major factor when you want to experience something in life. You need to change the number, Vernon. We got 276 this time. 804 674. 674. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I hate to be I hate to be so dyslectic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about human error, man. Everybody Well, well error, but but but, but there's a good chance for folks to remember this number. It's 804. Yes, it okay, tell tell them Six, again. 674 9550. All right. All right, 804-674-9550. All right, now I bet you I got it right this time. Oh, you do have it right. And let me say this, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Our trust level at the SOAR group, our trust level is so high. We have had people order the book, and I said, just send me the payment within six months. That's say that again. Our trust level. Say, say that again. We have had people to order the book and say wow. they didn't have the money at that time. Uh -huh. we, send, we send them the book, trusting and believing they will honor their word and send us that payment within six months. Wow. That's what we do. Wow. And that's, that's who we are at the SOAR group. We believe in trusting and, and having faith in people that they will do what is right, they will do what is just, and they will do what is acceptable. That's what we believe. Not, not all of them do it, but that's okay. That's their conscience. They have to live with that. Right, that's okay true. With that. We okay. We okay with that too. <laughs> okay, well, let's tell. You talked about the sore group a lot. Let's talk a little bit about the sore group. So, for the sore group, we specialize in organizational and leadership development training. That's the first thing. Okay. We also specialize in motivational speeches. That's the okay. second thing. The third thing we specialize in facilitating meetings. And retreats. And the third thing we offer is executive coaching. That's what we do. We've been in this business now for more than 25 years. I have a very seasoned and mature team of people who've been in the trenches, man, and they know what they're talking about. Each and every one are an expert in their own chosen field of endeavor. We don't cross over in lanes. Everybody stay in their lane. And we try to exceed all expectations when we're delivering services, either virtually or on site. Mm -hmm. We have we have we have um, delivered services in Japan, China, South Africa, Bulgaria, Hawaii, all throughout the United States, man. And uh, like I said, we are a minority-owned small business, and we specialize in again organizational leadership development training, facilitation, motivational speaking, executive coaching. And that's what we do. Wow, and we're okay. good at it. We are good at it. Now, and that that same number. I gave you if 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 somebody out there needed uh, like an organization, a uh, company, a small company, uh, so forth, they can contact you at the same number to yes, to sir. to hire the SOAR group to to do those kinds of services, huh? Yes, sir. Small or large, small or large. And the new thing that we've generated within the past few months, we finally got our trademark. Finally got our trademark approved, and it is SOAR. I'm wearing the hat now. You see the hat with the logo, and on the <laughs> shirt with the logo, it's so, man. You can get a hat, a shirt, we got um, uh, wristbands, we have um, long sleeve polo shirts. We, we got it, man, it, and it's working for us. So we try to emphasize the people. Okay. If you are committed, if you have desire to want to improve your lifestyle, you need to soar. To stretch out and rise. Some people say, is it a movement? Nah, not really. It's a lifestyle. That when people see you with the hat on saying sore, when they see you with the shirt on, short sleeve or long sleeve saying sore, they're going to be inquisitive. What does sore mean? It means stretch out and rise. Oh, I want to be a part of that because what I want to do, I want to stretch out and rise too. It's a, it's a brand, we branded this thing, man. We, this is all driven by wanting people to maximize their lifestyle and their life to soar. Show me a person who doesn't want to soar. Show me a person who just want to give up and do nothing in life. It's about soaring. It's about Absolutely. being the very best person you can be. Going forward, everything in life, Gernish, 
when you talk about being successful, moving in what direction? Forward. <laughs> if you want to get from one destination to the next, you got to move in what direction? Forward, right. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, that, that is so true. And sometimes most folks don't think about it. You're talking about some stories. Um, I, I got to tell you this. It's a funny story, but, but, but you're moving forward. And sometimes when one moves forward, it, it might not be in the same liking, if you will, for lack of a better term, of somebody else's. I, we, I got a dance studio, uh, Darius, and this is, is kind of funny, but, but, it, but, but it taught me a lesson. It really taught me a lesson. And, and we teach folks how to dance that they right. never, never had to dance before. Uh, and I'm talking about step by step. So one day, the, 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 the lady, I was teaching this lady to dance, right? And she had, we had to, I had to, had to, she had her feet together, right? And in order to learn this dance, okay, you have to start on your on your right foot. And I told her to, I say, step your right foot back, okay. And and uh, so she didn't. What she did was she stepped her left foot forward, right. Right. And I said, whoa! I said, put your right foot back. She said, it is back. And I looked back. I looked down, and she was right. She went forward by stepping up her. She went. She went forward by stepping on her left foot first, instead right. of stepping back the right foot. And I learned a right. lesson from that. But because the results are the same, okay? Results same are the same. Result. Same result. But, but but the strategy is what you said earlier. What you got to do? You got to move, okay? You yeah. got to. You got. You got to move. You only got time. You got space. Or you got an opportunity. And when you take those three things, you got to move, and it might change you for the better. And it will, hopefully it will change you for the better. And, and so, Vernon, uh, there's a chapter in the book called Forward Thinking. Okay. I came That's, up with that. Forward Thinking. Chapter 7. What is it about? Chapter 7. Forward Thinking, man. It's yeah. a powerful chapter. They said most things in life are always moving forward. How can it move forward unless you have what? Positive thoughts. Right. Positive emotion. But it's your thoughts that drive sometimes the emotion of your behavior. Forward thinking is always about thinking of ways to get better and better, better. and better. I do not have time for negativity. I do not have time for destructive thoughts. I'm about moving forward. You get in a car, you put it in drive, which way does it go? Forward. Right. Which way do we walk majority of the time? Forward. forward. Which way do we which way do we run majority of the time? Forward. Which way do we talk majority of the time? Forward. I'm not, you don't talk to people who talk backwards all the time. They talk about <laughs> things in the future. What's going on now? You get in the car, you put it in drive, it goes backwards, you get out of it. Why? It's not going in the right direction. Direction, right. That's right. We get in the plane, not because it's going backwards. We get in the plane because it's going to take us to our destination, which is forward. But sometimes people don't see it that way. I say, you have to be a forward thinker. How can I make my life? How can I make myself? How can I make my career what? Better and better. How forward thinking and you take those thoughts and put them into action. You know, you know, you you, you know, there you, you, you're so right. And, and, I, and I try to share with people, and when they read this book, they're going to understand what I'm talking about, okay? You know, I, and you talk about attitude, okay? You got to have that, you got to have that right attitude to start off with anything. You know, and in my good example of a bad example, my bad example of a good example, whichever whichever it is, okay. Now, I'm 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 always the worst at playing the uh, playing the uh, uh, the casinos, right? I'll never win. I don't never win because. But you know why I don't win? I re I came to realize why I don't win because. I don't. I don't have the right attitude. I know a lot of folks that take their money to the to the casinos and they can win. And the reason they win is because they believe that they can win. I be, I believe that I can't win, and therefore I don't win. And and you think about this for an example. I tell folks this a, a lot of time in my life. Ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. Therefore, I never seen a ghost in my life. But people that do believe in them. 
seize them. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So you gotta you gotta tell yourself you got to have the your 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 your, your attitude has to equal to what you want in a positive, like you say, direction. Okay. Yeah, change yeah. change that attitude. I know a lot of what I call negative people. And they will always be negative because that's what that that that's what goes on in their mind. Change it, change it to to forward thinking, and see what that helps. So, so Verna, what I also try to emphasize to people, and, and some people question me. I said, you know, it's been a long, long time since I've experienced a bad day. Right. I mean, a bad day. I mean, every second of the day being bad. They said, what do you mean? I say, what I've learned is that I experienced bad situations and circumstances, but I refuse to give anything to power over me, whereby every second of the entire day is bad. I right. got to have some good in my life. I don't care if it's done for five minutes in a day. I must have some good. And that's positive. <laughs> that gives that gives me strength. That gives me hope. That gives me desire that things will continue to what? You get better and I will overcome this temporary challenge. Or this temporary grief. I'm going to overcome it, but I got to keep moving forward. I got to have the right attitude and the right emotion and the right behavior. I must. You got, got to change your attitude. You got to change your attitude. You got to manage your emotions and manage your uh, behaviors at all times. And in the um, last chapter in the book, talks about three profound words: from, now, on. So people always ask us, how did California did you come up with that? From now on. <laughs> from represents from represents our past. Can we relive our past? Nope. Can you go back to your past? Nope. Can you repeat your age? Nope. The past is the past. So I strongly emphasize in the book, use whatever you can in your past to make you stronger, not make you weaker. Right. To make you more positive, not negative. Make you more constructive, not deconstructive. From everybody who was born into this world, at the instance you were born, you become to create a from, a past. That's a given. The next piece is now. Now is the present. At the blink of an eye, Vernon, your present becomes your what? Past. Past. Right. But you've got to maximize right now, man. It is right there. I'm telling you. I'm in the right place right now for the right reason, doing the right thing. And they say when you're in the right place for the right reason, doing the right thing, that's joy, that's peace, that's happiness. Why? Because you're in the present right now. But think about the number of people who are in a situation where they're unhappy right now. They're sad right now. They're disgruntled right now. They're angry right now. That one would say that's not a good place to be. But you can change it right now if you change your what? Attitude. Attitude. That's right. Change your emotions. Change your situation. Everybody experience a right now. And that's why you have 15 people burning in the same room. And all 15 will have a different attitude when? Right now. And I asked them, I said, what are you feeling right now? And what do you want to feel right now? You want to change that feeling from negative to positive? positive? You got to start when? Right now. That's all we have in the blink of an eye, man. It's gone from right now to the past. The <laughs> last word is on. Now, this is the, a powerful word because on represents the future. It's the hopes and dreams and possibilities and uh, what people are anxious about experiencing. But if you don't do what you need to do right now, when you get to the on or wherever that destination is, it may not be what you want it to be. Everybody have hopes. Everybody have dreams and aspirations. That's the on. Everybody look forward to holidays and birthdays and festivities. But you have to take care of right now. So when the on becomes right now, you can appreciate it. You can enjoy it. But there requires some work to be done between right now and the on to make sure you make it a reality. Otherwise, you're just hallucinating about the future. Because we're not doing what we need to do to experience it. You want to experience the on? You want to experience a great holiday, a great birthday, a great whatever? You got to start with, Vernon, right? Now. now. That's true. Wait. 
You cannot wait, man. You, because when your arm becomes a reality, you're now in the present. You know, right. In the future, it becomes the present. And then you reflect it. Oh, I wish I would have used that. No, 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 no. Start with right now. And reap the benefits of you taking charge of your own lifestyle. So that when you get to that end of the year, end of the month, you look back and say, you know what? I did all the right things. And that's why I am where I am right now. Because I took charge of my life. I did what was necessary to experience what I wanted to experience. And life is just a what, my friend? It's just an experience. But I say seize the moment to enjoy it, to embrace it, to appreciate it, and maximize it. Get all you can out of right now. That's the three powerful words, man. Wow. Now, there's th you know, you came from a very humble background, farm boy, into the successful person you are today. Tell them, tell them the story about how you came from where, from whence you came, who you are, where you were, as Dr. Matthew would say, who you are is where you were when. But talk to them because you could have easily went a different direction or you could have easily, if you like me, that, that hard life inspired me to, 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 to do better in life, you know, and them hot suns. But, but talk to them about how uh, a little country boy came to be in a successful man the way you are today. So great, great question. Uh, really my, I have two older brothers and my oldest brother and I was having this conversation last weekend about our humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, the three of us was basically born on a plantation in uh, Marion, South Carolina. Uh, grew up on a, on a plantation. I um, I drove a, a mule in trough while my brothers cropped tobacco. I picked cotton, dug potatoes out of the fields. Um, I was I was reared in a four room house with at one point in time my mother was my grandmother was taking care of eleven grandchildren at one time. Uh, powdered eggs, powdered milk, government cheese, outhouse. Some of y'all might be familiar with the term outhouse. Uh, water pump, I had to pump water for water. Um, you know, and uh, I'm gonna tell you something, Vernon. We had four meals a day. I don't know how my grandmother did it. Breakfast, lunch. Dinner and supper. I don't know how she did it, man. But she taught us some great, great values about family, about relationships, about valuing and maximizing what you have. And I'm going to tell you, uh, I can remember going to school uh, in elementary school, and I really, I was really uh, like this tall, uh, light skinned girl, the whole long hair. And I told <laughs> her I liked it. She said, she said, my mama said, I can't talk to you because you cold. I said to myself, oh, it's Poe. I'm not, what is Poe? And I went home and asked my grandma. I said, Grandma, what is it, Poe? What it means is Poe? She said, child, don't worry about it. They don't know what they're talking about. We got everything they, we need. We ain't Poe. We're never going to be Poe. I had no idea the concept, Bernard, because I had everything I needed. I had love. I had shelter. I had water. I had everything I needed to survive. And I look back on my humble beginnings. It is the rock, it is the foundation from which I've come and believe me. I know I'm a better person today because of that start in life. Yeah. That journey in life. No, I wasn't poor. I mean, we might have been liking some resources, but guess what? We had everything we needed. I had everything I needed to get me to where I need to be. That, yes. that, that, that is South Carolina. That is such a great example of of about attitude. You know, and by some people's standards, you were poor by their standards, okay? Yeah. But but you didn't let that you then and, and we were poor. You know, black folks are obviously poor growing up in, in, in hard times. But we didn't know that. We didn't we didn't realize that we would do but because I had not had somebody convinced us that we are never going to do any better, you're gonna to have to stay there. And then, you know, and, and some people obviously fell into that trap. But your attitude allowed you to say, oh, poor, who, what did you say? What did you say? Poor who, me? I, who you talking about? Who you talking about? Who you talking about? Well, I ain't poor because I got everything I want and everything I need except you and I don't get you too. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Is that, I, I never, never knew it, man. Never lived it, never believed in it. And I think uh, even today as I reflect back on those early years, I was not poor, man. Yeah. Not poor at all. And I think it's a it's a mentality that you accept and you adopt in your lifestyle 
And when you believe it, then you make it a come true. No such animal. I just yeah. just didn't have the resources, and that's key, bro. You may not have the same resources of other people, but if you have the necessities and you appreciate the necessities, you're gonna be okay. Because you will yeah. not give up. You will not give up. That's true. Life that's is true. Good, man. Life is good. You got that right. Uh, one of the things I tell folks all the time in my journey, okay, I don't what I, I don't know where I got it from, but I'm glad I have it. I, I don't I, I I don't think there's nothing that I can't do. I, I remember thirty years ago, Darius, I was talking to people about well more than thirty years ago about starting a TV station, and they just thought that was the most ridiculous thing you ever heard. I, uh, you know, uh, a man like you, how, you don't have the resources to start a TV. You can't, you don't have, which I didn't have, didn't have the resources, didn't have the know how, I didn't have any of that kind of stuff to start. But that didn't stop me from trying, okay? And I did, and I, and I did try, and I, and I was able to, to achieve my goal. Nothing would tell me what I can't, what I can't do. And, and maybe I'm crazy to think that I can't do anything, but whatever I did, everything I put in my mind to do, I was able to to overcome it, and I was able to do it. You know, even, you know. And I got a in my mantra, if you will, in my in my TV station, is the fact that yes, I, I didn't have the know how, I didn't have the money, I didn't have, but but you know, I I created, I I, I use a bumblebee as my mascot, and it, you can you can and folks can use this as a as a good example in their life. But I use a bumblebee. You know, why I use a bumblebee. Darius, I know you know why. What, what, what? Do you know what the expert says about bumblebees and flying? Tell me, man. Tell, educate they, me right now. Okay. Well, all the experts saying a bumblebee, by all scientific matter, shouldn't be able to fly. The body is too big and fat and too short, and the, I mean, and the wings are too short to fly. But yet, bumblebees fly, and bumblebees does a great service a bees period does a great service yeah. uh, to 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 the world but yet by somebody's standard they shouldn't be able to fly bumblebee didn't know he shouldn't be able to fly he, he does it same thing i said about me i i i i, 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 I wouldn't fly i met a bumblebee probably can't fly like a 747 right but but they're flying and and that's what I said about my. That's what the 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 the, the motto I use. I, I I might not. I may not have the resources of uh, 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 MGM. Okay, I might not have the the techno uh, the technical knowledge of a, uh, an engineer that, that required to, to to get things going. I may not have the sales ability of some of these six salespeople that you know all those things that was needed to re that was required to to have a, a TV station a radio station I didn't have but I didn't let that stop me but yet for 30 years I was able to provide a service to this community okay and I might not be rich as as, uh, as MGM I might not fly like a like a 747 but I'm just like that be I'm still I'm still flying and I'm still providing a service and that's what I want to embrace to other people to do you know it, it, it whatever you do just to, it, and whatever at whatever scale and whatever level you at you might not impact the whole world but you might impact your community okay you might impact your state or you might impact a real region you don't know but but that impact impacts a lot of other folks but if you fail to do that everybody loses but yeah and so that's why I like your book it because it challenged people to do the right thing to and I like you with I like to soar it's the ego man it's the ego soaring why not yeah. soar man yeah and I, and I just think that just to be able to speak to people is an affirmation and that contributes not only to your life but to the life of another person it's right. not complicated Vernon this life is not complicated in this book simplifies how you can improve your lifestyle how you can live a safe healthy supportive productive and successful life that is what i emphasize that is what i wish for every human being to embrace it to experience it 
to enjoy and then to share it. But it doesn't start with another person. It starts right here in your space. Do not allow other people to manage your space, manage your own space. And I tell you, as you as you travel down this one-way path called life, you will have a great appreciation of what you experience and the results and successes of it. Oh, I'm, I'm a living proof, but I know there are millions of other people who are living proof. But you got to embrace it for yourself. I was the only African-American, United States of America, maybe about 15 years ago, to be selected by, by the Kellogg Foundation, in the Health Foundation, who serve as one of only 13 Americans and the only African Americans selected to be a part of the United States China Educational Institute. Only one. Someone says, why did California did they select you? <laughs> I, I, said, I, don't, I said, it had to be something. They didn't just pull it up, a straw out of a hat. They looked at my credentials, right? And they said, well, you don't have all this at all. I said, there's some things you're not aware of about me. You don't know where I come from. You don't know my journey. You don't right. know my experience. But somehow, the Kellogg Foundation, the Health Foundation, saw some good in what I had achieved from my humble beginning. I, I still, I'm just, I'm very grateful and humble about it. That me, so-called pole boy, that somebody that's called pole, was able to achieve this level. <laughs> that's true. It's, all, it's, it's how you live, Vernon. It's how, in this book, I know, man, without a doubt, without a doubt, will be of help to many, many people in this world. And then they may say, you know what? I want a sore hat. I want a sore shirt. Because for the remainder of my life, no matter what my age and condition, I will never, ever, ever give up. That's what Church, Church, um, um, Church Hill, well, what's the church is saying? He says, uh -huh. long as you're alive, never, never, never give up. Give up, not right. Once, not twice. Not three times, never give up. Why? It, Vernon, in reality, it doesn't make sense for Darius Dean Swinton to give up, to ever give up <laughs> on Darius Dean Swinton. Swinton, right. It, just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> you, you're so, you're so 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 right and but why would people do that i don't know everybody's everybody's differently but but i think if you can motivate people and i think folks like you that can motivate folks can get them to change their change that attitude change that emotion change that behavior and uh and and get whatever out of life that they want you know and you can achieve anything in life that you want only if you have the right attitude to do about it. Let's talk. Let's go back and tell these folks that they, they got to be able to pick up this book, uh, Darius. So they got to read it. They gotta have to read Source. Okay. Tell them again. I got a phone number up there in, the, in your in, in your website. Talk about your website for a minute. The type, the website is thesourcegroup.com. Very easy. Three words connected. Thesourcegroup.com. You go on the website. You see all the services that we render, all the activities we render. You're going to the, uh, the shop, and in the shop, you see all the time that we have for sale. You, you'll see the whole listing. We have a, a professional training um, catalog. You see the six day plus courses that we offer, either virtually or on site. You see some of the um, some of the trainers on our site. You also see all the services we render on the site. And whatever is missing, all you gotta do is call me. Email me at the sore group at gmail.com. Vernon, the good thing about no matter where we are located in the world, we promise to return an email within 20, 48 hours. I'm sorry, within 48 hours, no matter where we are in the world. We, that's our commitment. Okay. That's our commitment. And, and you got to go on the website, just check it out. I mean, it's good stuff. You know, and, and, and all of our services are very simple. But I can assure you, just like uh, was last month, I did a, a keynote address for Johnson County Public School, okay, in North Carolina. Had about 300 employees. At the end of the presentation, Verna, everyone up on their feet couldn't get enough of this good stuff, man. And I, I, I told them, I said, you know what? Yes, you, you got up and you participated in the activity because of your attitude, your emotion. Your, you wanted to be a part of something. Powerful and significant and rewarding and beneficial. That's why you engage it. That is what you want to do with your students this year. 
you want to motivate them to the, to the point where they will have a positive attitude, they will have positive emotions, but they will want to learn and be successful by making all those A's and B's throughout the school year. It's not <laughs> rocket scientists. It's engaging with another human being to try to help them to maximize their potential into a reality. Yeah. Check out the website. Call me, 804-674-9550. If you just want to chat, you have some thoughts in your mind. I'm a great listener. I, I take pride in listening to other people. So guess what? When I listen, I learn. I grow. So call me. It won't, won't cost you a dime. It might cost you a few minutes of your time, but I believe it will be well, well worth it to give me a call. Now, there is, when you go to that website, one of the things they're going to learn, now, I want you to just briefly talk about the 10 Ds, okay? Oh, Can you talk about that, okay. the 10 Ds to soar? You know what? I'm going <laughs> to give them the 10 Ds. The 10 Ds for living a successful lifestyle. The first D, so y'all listeners and lookers, you need to write this stuff down. You know, if you're not going to buy the book, I'm going to give this to you free. The first D is desire. The first D is desire. No mm -hmm. one can give you desire. It's all within you. That's desire. Every human being have a certain level of desire. It may vary from person to person, but you have it. The next thing is devotion. Take time out to reflect on your lifestyle, how you're living, devotion. Get in touch with your spiritual being if you have one. If not, you might want to consider having one. Some people call it um, not so much devotion. They have reflection time. Mm -hmm. Meditation time. However you define it, engage in it at least a few minutes every day. The next is discipline. If you want to be successful, you must have a certain level of self-discipline. The more disciplined you are, hey, the more you can engage in being a successful person. Then you also got to have this thing called determination. Oh, man. Determination requires that you never, ever, ever give up. When you get tired, you can pause, but don't stop. Then also you got to have development. How do we get better as a person? Unless you have some self-development. Read, study, take classes, go to training. Read, study, take classes, talk to people who are successful, who moved up in life. What about being decisive? Stop being all wishy-washy. Make up your mind and go for it. Come on, step up to the plate. Then you got to demonstrate. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Walk the walk and do it. This is where this number nine, which I talked about earlier. The last D is driven. This is the most powerful one of all, to be driven. That what I'm about is always moving forward. To get better and better and better. So you will have a great, successful, rewarding, and beneficial journey. It's driven. Think about this. When you go to school, you go from the fifth grade to the sixth grade to the seventh grade, right, Vernon? Right. That's exactly. You don't go from you don't go from the fifth grade to the fourth grade to the third grade. <laughs> it's about getting better. <laughs> you don't you don't get you don't go from being forty to you, you go from being 40, 41, 42, 43. How many people you know have gone from forty to thirty nine to thirty? They may want to act that way, but we know their age. We know they're getting older. Yeah. It all makes sense. It makes sense. So be driven, people. Ten All right. Days All right. Successful living. Simple can be done if you put your mind to it. All right, Devin. Our time is about up. I'm going to give you the oh, last man. few seconds. So you see how time flies? It's been an hour now. Oh, so oh, so I'm going to give you the last word here. Well, this is the last word. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to offer to you for serious consideration. If we've been granted this one life that I'm aware of, why not seize the moment, seize the time, seize the space, seize the opportunity and resources to be the best day going person you can be during this lifetime. I think you deserve it. I think you can make it happen. And I will support you whatever I can to help you to be successful, to help you to live a safe, healthy, productive and successful lifestyle. At the end of the, end of the journey, someone will say, it was well worth the journey. It was well worth the sacrifice. It was well worth the time. I am Darius Swinton. I'm your speaker. I'm your trainer. I'm your motivator. I'm your coach. And you know what? I have no problem with being your friend and your helper. 
Bernard, I am so, so grateful for the years of friendship I've experienced with you and you giving me this unique and special opportunity to come on your show. I am, I say this sincerely. I am so, so grateful for this opportunity. Thank you more than a hundred times. Oh, no problem. No problem. Now, this is, we, we are on Facebook Live and we're on YouTube Live. If you go to our YouTube channel and subscribe and have your friends and forward this stuff on on your Facebook pages and, and tell people to forward to their friends and everything. Some folks say, well, I didn't get it. Well, you would, the only problem I see with Facebook, if you, you're not somebody's friend, you might not get it. Get the notification, you might not get it. So, but befriend them, like us on Facebook. Uh, uh, go to uh, say go to YouTube and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and pass it on. Just don't just look at it yourself. Pass it on to other folks. We we don't mind you spreading the word at all. So that is I, this is about it for us. I, I I thank you for coming on and sharing your sharing your book with us, uh, folks. I know this book is going to be a, a great help to you. There's a number on the screen there, 804-674-9550. If you want to get the book, or go to the website, the Source Group uh, uh, dot com, or email them at the Source Group at gmail dot com, and uh, you can, should be able. To, and he, he gave you. Uh, if you don't have the money, I, God bless you, my brother. But if you don't have the money, <laughs> uh, you can pay him later. And that's just how much confidence he have in you. And so, there's. Well, thank you, and I really appreciate you for coming on. Okay. All right. All right. Everybody's sore. All right, Pensacola. Uh, thank you for listening, and please pass on the word, and uh, and let everybody know that Pensacola wants to know about what's going on in this in this city and in this world. So I think Darius again. Darius is, uh, is out of you out of Virginia, right, uh, Darius? Richmond, Virginia. Yes. You're Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. Virginia. All right. So, all right. So call at number eight zero four six seven four nine five five zero. Or go to the website, swordsgroup.com, or just give them an email at swordsgroup at gmail.com. Very easy to remember. So thank you, Darius. We'll see you on. An, and thank you, Pensacola, and for all the viewers around the, around the world and, and in Pensacola. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you on again on another edition of Pensacola Wants to Know.